It was 1968. The Vietnam War was raging. Young men from all over the country were fighting. That's when young journalist Nancy Lynch took on an assignment called Nancy's Vietnam Mailbag. It was a way for soldiers overseas to write about their experience. In 2008, Nancy put the war letters and pictures sent to her in a book to honor her guys. Next month, Nancy and a veteran who wrote frequently to Lynch will share some of the letters at a program at Greenwood Library. And we are so honored to have Nancy join us this afternoon. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I, I have thank to mention you. that we first met back in 2014 talking about this book. Correct. And yes. uh, I remember just being so fascinated by it. And, 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 and it just keeps keeps giving, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So Indeed. let's go back to the history of how this got started. Actually, it was an assignment from my editors. I was a very young reporter at the News Journal in Wilmington, Delaware, and three editors surrounded my desk, and I was appropriately alarmed, thinking <laughs> either this is going to be very good or very bad. Yes. And they said, because our troops, Delaware troops mostly, were already getting our newspaper as a complimentary subscription, we want you to try to get the troops to write to you. And if you do, we will publish their letters and any pictures and off and running. You'd have your own column. So wow. most reporters would have killed for their own column. Wow, I'd only been so. working for the News Journal less than a year at that wow. point. So anyway, fired off a letter to the troops, of course we had their addresses in Vietnam because they were getting the paper. It was a brilliant idea, not mine, my editors. And I waited and waited. And three weeks went by and I thought, okay, not gonna work, but they're a little busy fighting a war. So, and the very next day, as it so often happens, one letter arrived. And I just remember sitting in the newsroom in, on Orange Street in Wilmington, Delaware. I held the letter up to the light. I couldn't even open it in place of a stamp that was marked free, it was addressed to me, and the next day, 10 more letters, the next day, 15, we were in business. Oh my How many did you end up getting all together? Nearly 1,000 letters. Wow. Over five years, we started the column in May of 1968, and it was all dependent on the letters, and it rolled on until the end of the war. December of 72, we signed the peace accords in January of 73. And it literally um, is an incredible assemblage of um, letters, almost like a diary. Yeah. Book. This is the book. So you decided to write the book. That happened in 2007? Well, actually it happened long before then. Oh, okay. My very last column in December of 72, I wrote to my guys and I said, someday I'm going to put all your letters and pictures in a book. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell them when, and mm -hmm. that was good because time goes by, life intervenes. Sure. But we started work on the book, assembling it in 2006. Yeah. And it took two years, staff of 10, um, not counting me, and but mission accomplished. The book was released on Veterans Day of 08. Uh, Delaware Public Archives gave us a very nice reception for which we'll forever be grateful. And uh, since then, it's just kind of taken off. Yeah. This is absolutely amazing. The pictures, the letters, so many of them have the Delaware state flag in them. Oh yes, yes. And we made sure that every trooper in Vietnam who wanted a Delaware state flag. We worked through the, it's had many names, but State Development Department uh, was sent a flag. Wow. And they used it as calling cards. It was just like, you know, that's how others knew where they were from, so. Wow. So, and you have kept in contact with some of these. With many of them, and for the program in, um, at Greenwood on February 7th, I will be speaking with, when I do this program, I speak with a Vietnam veteran, Rick Lovkin. He was a Cobra crew chief and a Huey door gunner in Vietnam. He's the real deal. Yeah. He, he really is. He was there and he lends so, so much to the program. I was frankly just the cheerleader at home. I did not go to Vietnam. I've not been. Mm. And yeah. I was just 
doing is, my job. This is astounding. Absolutely astounding. Now, you mentioned you. the program that you have coming up at the Greenwood Library, mm -hmm. and we're going to t talk about that a little bit more and talk about some other programs that are happening. That's coming up uh, next. Would you mind sticking around? I would love to. Good all, right. all right. Thank you so much. Giving a voice to those fighting for our country thousands of miles away from home and sharing their experiences with the world. That was the mission of the Vietnam Mailbag Project that collected soldiers' letters that ended up turning into a full-fledged book in 2008. And to hear author and journalist Nancy Lynch tell it, the project has taken on a life of its own and continues to expand into programming for the Greenwood Library. And we're back with Nancy. And we're also joined here by Andrew Knestot. He is the li teen librarian at the Greenwood Library. Thank you both for being here this afternoon. And, and we just heard from you, Nancy. Yes. This is such an amazing project you have here. But Andrew, I got to ask you first, how did, how did the library get involved with uh, putting on this program with Nancy? Uh, well, our um, adult services librarian, Robin, she yes. reached out to her to um, you know, fill programming at the Greenwood Library. We're always trying to find new and interesting things we can educate the public about or just enrich people's lives. Sure, sure. All right. We're going to start with the basic here. Uh, the book, of course, in, involves letters and pictures from Vietnam vets that you have corresponded with. Um, for those who want to stop by and hear you and experience it, what can they expect? They can expect to hear my backstory of how I did get involved with the veterans, and but that's very quick because the program is really about our veterans. Yeah. And what I do, I read select letters to actually give them a voice in the in the program, so that our audience will understand what these troops. And we're talking 50 years ago. These were just mostly teenage. Kids. kids out of high school and do you think going to Vietnam was at the top of their to-do list I don't think so yeah. and they were they were scared and it all of that comes through in their letters and I share those letters with the audience to really put them in that space into it. Yeah. and you're also bringing along uh, one of the veterans as when you mentioned. we do Vietnam mailbag yes we uh, it's a collaboration mm -hmm. and uh, Vietnam veteran Rick Lovekin who served with the 100 in the Army, 147th Helicopter Assault Company, um, is we split the hour and he does half the show and he shares some of his experiences and he brings a wonderful display of artifacts. I mean, not so nice artifacts, bullets and that kind right. of thing, but it can be a, a hands-on display and the audience seems to enjoy that. I bring some of the original letters with me and there's something about seeing handwriting of a young trooper so far from home and so scared in most times. And Because you have to remember, average age of our troop fighting, excluding officers, was 18. Mm -hmm. And the wow. average age of the enemy was 16. You think of Vietnam and it was a war ostensibly of teenagers. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Now, Andrew, this is just one of several programs you have going on at the Greenwood Library, and they're all free, right? All free. Yeah. All free and open to the public. Yeah, so tell us about some of the others. Well, I have a few dates here, um, and we have, a, we have a lot of problems, our programs for kids and teens of all ages, story times, after school programs that regularly occurring. You can check our calendar for those. Mm -hmm. And we also do a lot of specialty programming for adults and teens. Uh, I've got coming up in Saturday, January 28th, uh, Creating Comics Teen Workshop at 12.30 p.m. The PLB Comics team will share the process of comic book creation. Attendees will be guided through crafting stories, laying out pages, drawing, inking, and lettering to create their own comic books. Mm. Um, starting March 2nd, we have the Eating Smart and Moving More class. Uh, a nutrition assistant from the Inter University of Delaware will present a weekly healthy living class running for six weeks. Well, this is just stuff for everybody, any age. Isn't <laughs> any it? age? Yeah, it's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. Come by the library and find out. So how, uh, how can people get involved with the library and with the events? Um, some of them require registration, not all of them. The, the comic book workshop does require registration. Okay. Anything that where you'd have, you know, materials. Supplies, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, you can go on the website. 
um, register there or call us at 302-855-1242. All right. And of course, we'll have a link to your website from our website, delmarvalife.com, so you can get all the information. Attend one, maybe all of them. Right. Yeah, there and, you and yours is the 7th? February 7th, 6 p.m. All right. Greenwood Library. Be there. Yes. Be there. Yeah, I think Least it's there. all going to be very interesting. <laughs> Nancy and Andrew, thank you both for coming in this afternoon. And good luck with the program. Thank you. Uh, no our thank pleasure. You.